Please state your full name. My name is Catherine Mentor Carey, although I sometimes go by Missy. Is that a name your, your parents gave you? Uh, it's a nickname. My sister and I were Missy and Prissy growing up, and, you know, I got the better end of that deal, so. So which name do you go by? I think everyone here would know me by Missy. All right. Okay, if I call you Missy. It is. All right, Missy. Where did you grow up? I grew up here in Austin. And what, is your mom, what did your mom do? She was a school teacher and a stay-at-home mom. How about your dad? My father's an attorney. He, and where, where did he work? Um, actually, his first job was he was an assistant attorney general at the attorney general's office from 1965 when I was born to 1971. And then he had, a, he had private practice in a law firm here in Austin. Was he a role model for you? He is a role model for me, yes. See why you became a lawyer? He is. How about the Attorney General's office? It just, you know, when I was a kid, he would take me up there. I was probably kindergarten or first grade, and it was like the scene from Mad Men, if you know the TV show. It was, it was a cool place, and it was what I always wanted to be. So where did you go for undergrad? Um, I started at Hollins College, which is a girls' school in Virginia, and then I transferred to Texas A&M, where I graduated. With What's a degree your degree in? In political science. Where'd you go after that? I went to law school at St. Mary's in San Antonio. And were you licensed to practice law? I am. I'm licensed in Texas in 1990. After you got your license, where did you go to work? My first job was here at the General Land Office. I was a staff. First, I started out because I didn't have my bar results, and I learned quick that the Appropriations Act says you have to have a license to be a lawyer. So I started actually as a legal secretary or law clerk, and then when I got my results, I became a staff attorney there for five years. And when you got promoted to staff attorney, what kind of things were you handling? I did employment law. I did, wrote legislation. Um, I worked on the Open Beaches Act, the Open uh, the Oil Spill Response Act. Um, I did a little bit of collections for the permanent school fund, did different things like that. At the end of your five years, where did you move to? I moved for the first time to the Office of the Attorney General. Okay. And which department were you assigned to work in? In the Administrative Law Division. And what kind of things did you handle? So I, part of the time I was a litigator in Administrative Law, represented the state and court. Um, the other duties were general counsel to various state agencies that didn't have their own general counsels. I did uh, open records, open meetings. I drafted rules, uh, tried cases about the Administrative Procedures Act, did some employment law. Sounds like all kinds of things. Kind of a, a division that does a little bit of everything government oriented. Okay. Did you leave the Attorney General's office? I did. I left the Attorney General's office short for a while in 1997, and I was conscripted, so to speak, to work at the Texas Lottery Commission for Harriet Myers, Anthony Sadbury, and Judge Hill, John Hill, um, to work on uh, a matter with the executive director at the time that was kind of well known in the press. Okay. So. Was, was there a scandal? There was. And did it all have to get cleaned up? It did. And did you assist with that? I did. All right. After that work got done, where did you go? After that work got done, I was asked by incoming Attorney General, uh, now Senator John Cornyn, to come and be the Attorney General's Office's Public Information Coordinator. So I came back to the Attorney General's Office in 1999, and I did the coordinator position for a year, and then I was given the division chief of the Open Records Division next. And I think I held that position about six or seven years. And at the end of that, where did you go? Uh, I was promoted <clears throat> to uh, the, ger the general counsel position for the Office of the Attorney General. I think in 2006, I was the agency's general counsel. And after that? After that, um, I was promoted by Governor Abbott when he was still Attorney General to be the Deputy for Administration for the Office of the Attorney General, and I remained in that position when General Paxton came in and uh, did, did the same basic job for both of them. Tell us how many Attorney Generals you've worked for. As Attorney General, I've worked for four, and then John Hill at the Lottery Commission. 
Okay. So five. Tell us the names. So uh, Dan Morales, uh, John Cornyn, Greg Abbott, Ken Paxton, uh, Attorney General Hill when he was on the Lottery Commission. And I also worked at the land office for Gary Morrow, who was a statewide elected official. In 2014, when Ken Paxton became the Attorney General, did you receive a promotion? I did. And what were you promoted to? I was the first female chief of staff of the office of the Attorney General, and the first person to work their way all the way up from a line lawyer to a position that high in the agency. And who did you report to in that position? I reported to Jeff Mateer, who was the first assistant. Well, actually, probably it was Chip Roy first. I can't remember. It was the first assistant, whichever one was there first. And eventually to Jeff Mateer as Indeed. first assistant? I think Jeff was their chief of staff, yes. Okay. May I have exhibit 553, please? It's not an evidence it was used, I think, with the very first witness. And I'll offer it into evidence. It's an organizational chart. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. And her, I don't have a copy, but what's the number? It's 553. 553 into evidence. In the future, if you all can give us a copy. Thank you. Can you see the chart? 553? I can. Okay. And what year is this chart reflecting? This chart, even though it's dated September 2020, I think reflects the organization as of September of 2019. Okay. And are the names, have the names changed a little bit during your, the time that you were there? I'm, I'm interested actually in the divisions and the deputies, the slots. Can you, looking at the far left of the, the line of executives, can you tell us, as chief of staff, who you worked with um, during the period of time that you were working with Ken Paxton as your assistant, as your attorney general? Start at the left, if you So would. there's a different org ch chart that's now come up on the screen. This organizational chart is the chart from 2019 before September 1st, 2019. And I'm happy to, to answer the question. I'm just not sure which chart you want me to answer the question for. Are we on 553? 553. 553. I'm interested in the divisions. Can you, I understand. Can you? Can you oh, which chart are you interested in the divisions on? There's two organizational charts, and they're, it's different, actually. How about the one that we're looking at right now? Does that help? That helps. Yes? Yes. All right. Let's start at the far left of the chart. Okay. And can you tell us which divisions you supervised and spent the most time with? The first assistant supervised all of the deputies. However, Mr. Starr and I sort of split the deputies by areas of our expertise to assist Jeff in his management of the deputies. So for me, I was most involved with the Deputy Attorney General for Child Support and the 40 Director, the Chief Information Officer, which is the IT Department, uh, the Deputy for Administration, the Deputy Attorney General for Criminal Justice, the Director of Law Enforcement, and if you could shift it over a little bit. Uh, and that would be all there. And then if you look above, directly reporting to me was the agency's public information coordinator, who I oversaw. And then I also helped the first assistant with the ombudsperson and the internal auditor. When you retired, how many years had you spent with the attorney general's office? Just the attorney general's office, somewhere over 20. 25, probably, 20, 20, well, probably 20. And during the time that you were there, would you say you developed certain areas of expertise? I did over my career develop certain areas of expertise, yes. And those particular areas, do you actually teach? You teach other people about them? 
I have taught other people in the past, yes, about the, my areas of expertise. What kind of places have you taught at? I mean, I've taught at CLEs. I've taught um, at the National Association of Attorneys General. I was one of their instructor faculty. Um, I've taught uh, about how to run an attorney general's office, how to fund an attorney general's office, what do attorney generals do. I've consulted with other attorney generals across the country about their attorney general's offices. I've taught ethics. I've taught uh, contracting. I've taught administrative law. I've taught open records many times, open meetings, administrative <laughs> law in general. And how about writing? Have you, have you published any publications? I have. I've published law review articles and other, other writings, both right. about employment law, procurement law, administrative law. I'm board certified in administrative law. I'd like to go forward to 2018, if you would. All right. Okay. What building were, were you officing in at that time? My office in 2018 was in the Price Daniel building, which is attached to the Supreme Court on this side of the street. What floor? The eighth floor. And who officed around you? It was, I mean, my office was uh, directly next to the first assistants with his assistant in between us. And uh, on the other side was the conference room and then the attorney general. So would it be fair to say that the people around you were the executive team? Correct. Was it all of the executive team or part of them? It was part of the executive team. For example, the child support division has its own building out on Old Wharf, and the child support 40 director always had an office in each place. The director of law enforcement and the head prosecutor also had two offices, as did the um, director of IT. But it was intended to be the executive staff on the eighth floor. So in 2018, can you tell us a little bit about the quality of the executives that were around you? Who were they and, and what did you think of them? Well, I mean... Your Honor, objection relevance. It doesn't matter what she thinks of them. It has nothing to do with this. Sustain. Can you tell us, please, the, the people that worked with you? Um, did they mirror the policy choices of Attorney General Paxton. Your Honor, again, relevance, object. What overrule this time? They did. The executive team was created in order to further General Paxton or any Attorney General's agenda and uh, desires of where they want the office to go. And they did so. And during the period from 2018 up to 2020, were you aware of um, how they were perceived by people outside of the office, other professionals? Objection, Your Honor. That calls for speculation. How can, how can she know what people outside the office thought about these people? I can, I can qualify. Sustain. Are you familiar with, with how the executive group within your office was perceived by people outside of the office, for example, other professionals in Texas and even outside of Texas. Objection, Your Honor. Personal knowledge, she doesn't have it, and to the extent she has any, it would be hearsay. Sustained. Do you know what the, the general opinion was of the office from 2018 to 2020? Objection again, Your Honor. The general opinion of who? I mean, there could be, I mean, there's almost 30 million Texans. There could be 30 million opinions. Sustained. Did the executive team meet regularly with Jim Mateer? With Jeff Mateer, yes. Sorry. And at those meetings, would you all catch up on what was going on with each other's departments? We had a Thursday executive meeting that included, at times, General Paxson and Mr. Mateer and the deputies, and we caught each other up on what was going on, yes. Can you tell us what General Paxton's involvement with the day-to-day -day operation of, of the office was? His involvement was similar to most other attorneys general. Most attorneys general set the high-level policy and high-level direction of where they want the executive staff to go and then depend on the executive staff to uh, complete those tasks and to follow that direction. So, Missy, you had worked in the office for a very long time at that point. 
As you looked around you at the people that you were working with, how would you describe them? Objection, Your Honor. Vague and irrelevant. So sustained. What kind of group were they? Again, I don't, I have no idea what that means. What kind of group were they? they it could be anything. Vague. Could you be more specific? Thank yes. you. Was there a description that you used for the people that you were working with? Did you again, call them something? I'm sorry to interrupt again, Your Honor. It's the same objection. I have to sustain. Of all of the people that you worked with at the Attorney General's office, and again, I know they're like children, right? We don't like to say which ones are our favorite, but as a group, can you qualify, quantify them for us from 2018 to 2020? Your Honor, I'm, again, I hate to slow this down, but that question is vague and, as best I can tell, irrelevant. Sustained. Describe your office for us in 2018. Is she, again, vague? Is she talking about the building? I'm not sure what she's talking about, vague. Yes, C Counselor, can you be very specific? Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about the people who worked around you from 2018 to 2020, your executive team? It's a compound question, objection. She's asking about multiple people. We don't know who she's talking about, but to the extent it's more than one, it's compound. I can compound. take them one by one. If counsel wants me to do that, we can do that. You're on the clock. Yes, I want you to do that. Ask a specific question. Okay. Sustain. Be specific. Did you have an opinion about the people that you were working with, your executive team, during that time period? Yes. Tell us what that opinion was. Objection, Your Honor. Vague. Which person is she referring to? I'm referring to the entire executive team that we've talked about. Yeah, we can. Your, I'm sorry to do this, but she can ask, what's your opinion of Mateer? To the extent that's even relevant, probably not, but this is very vague, and, and to the extent it's not vague, it's compound. I'm going to overrule. You can ask the question. You can answer what your opinion was of the overall team. Can answer the question. My opinion of the overall executive team was that they were incredibly professional. They were committed to General Paxton's agenda, and it all in all, it was an incredible set of legal minds. Was part of your responsibilities working with and supervising the security detail group? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. I did not supervise the security detail because they work for the Department of Public Safety, but I did liaison with the security detail as one of their points of contact, myself and Jeff Mateer. Okay. How about the scheduler? The scheduler did not report to me, reported to Jeff, but I did help at times with questions and things with the schedule. I want to talk with you specifically about spring of 2018, okay? Yes. All right. Was there an incident that caused you some concern? Yes. And I want to talk about that. Can you tell us where you were when it happened? I believe you're referring to an incident at the Galaxy Cafe. I am. Spring of 2018, I was at the Galaxy Cafe on, on West Lynn eating lunch by myself. They have very small tables that sit two by two, very close to the person who's sitting next to you. I was alone eating lunch, and there was a, a, a man and a woman sitting to the table directly next to me, probably within three feet away. And they were having a conversation, and the woman of the group was sharing what I perceived to be uh, very Objection. personal. I'm sorry. Uh, well, she's about to repeat hearsay. I object to that. Sustained. As you sat and listened to the conversation, did you overhear some information that you felt was inappropriate? 
This question calls for speculation and also hearsay. I object. Sustained. As you sat and listened to the conversation, how did you feel? Objection, relevance. Does it matter how she felt? I mean, what has nothing to do with this case? Sustained. As you sat and listened to the conversation, um, did you decide to do something? Objection, vague. I'm not sure what that means, Your Honor. We'll overrule. What did you do? After listening to the conversation, I took a photograph of this person and took it back directly to Attorney General Paxton. And why did you do Excuse that? Excuse me, can you move closer to the mic? Yes. Okay, thank you, thank you, Ms. Kerry. And why did you do that? Because I felt the conversation was... Objection, hearsay. I'm not asking for hearsay. I'm asking what her concern was. That's not what the question was, Your Honor. I she asked didn't... her... Would you repeat the question? Yes. You took a picture of the woman. Why did you do that? I wanted to talk to General Paxson about it, the ins what I saw. Is security of the Attorney General something that you as an employee were very concerned with? Always. Was the conversation that you overheard causing you concern about safety for the Attorney General? No. What was it causing you concern about? Objection. She hasn't said that she was caused concern. I mean, it assumes that she was concerned, and she hasn't told us that yet. Sustain, you can ask that question. Were you concerned? Yes. What were you concerned about? The level of personal detail being shared in a public space. And was it, was it directed to the Attorney General Ken Paxton? No. Who was it directed to? It was directed to a, a man who I did not recognize at, at her lunch table. Okay. The woman that was speaking, did you recognize her? No. Did you do anything further before you left the restaurant? No. Did you monitor the woman as she was leaving the restaurant? Objection leading. Sustained. What did you do? She's already said she did nothing else, Your Honor. Ask and answered. Can you rephrase that a little bit? I can. Before you left the restaurant, did you try to get any additional information about the woman? I looked at the car she was driving when we were leaving at the same time. And what kind of information did you get about the car? I noticed that the car, I noticed the kind of car it was, the color, and that it was a car purchased in San Antonio. Okay. You had the picture in your phone, you had the car information. What did you do with that? I waited for a time when I could talk to General Paxton privately, and I talked to him privately about what I'd witnessed. Okay. Tell us what you told him. Objection, hearsay. It's not offered for the truth of the matter asserted, uh, Mr. President. It's to show the effect on this witness and the actions that she took as a result of it. Absolutely. What did you tell General Paxton about what you heard? Basically what I've just told the court, and I asked him if, I knew, if he knew who she was. What information did you relay to him about what you had heard? I relayed to him that I was sitting at lunch alone in the Galaxy Cafe, and I overheard loudly a conversation uh, between two people, and that the details that were provided by this person were surprising to me and of concern, and I wanted him to know about it. Specifically, what details were you concerned about? This is hearsay, Your Honor. You've already ruled on that. Sustained. Yeah. I'm not offering it for the truth of the matter asserted. I'm trying to show why she's doing what she's doing. If it's not offered for the truth, then it's irrelevant. Sustained. When you talked with General Paxton, what, how did he respond? He told me that I had taken a picture of his realtor who was trying to sell his condo on Enfield, and that he would talk to her. Did you believe that? Absolutely. 
Was he concerned that someone was talking about his personal business in a restaurant out loud? No. Did you believe him when he said it was his realtor? Yes. Objection, objection asked and answered. Overruled. Did he provide a name for that person? No, he did not. All right. Let's come forward now to May of 2018. <clears throat> Um, did you have an occasion to go to an official function in San Antonio? Yes. And did you see someone there that you recognized? Yes. And who was, who was it that you recognized? Same lady I'd seen in Galaxy Cafe. Okay. A realtor at an official function? What kind of function were you at? Was that a National Association of Attorney General's reception? A happy hour, cocktail hour? Did you get the name of that person? He was wearing a name tag. And what was the name? Laura Olson. Okay. During the course of uh, the spring and summer of 2018, did you come to learn what the relationship was between Laura Olson and the Attorney General? I did. Objection, Your Honor. I'd like to lay a predicate for that. Otherwise, it's based on hearsay. Sustained. How did you come to learn about the relationship? Attorney General told me about it. I was also told by the security detail and the travel aides. And did you confirm that it was the name Laura Olson, same person? I did. How did that make you feel about him telling you that she was a realtor? Surprised. That he had lied to you? Yes. May I have uh, House Exhibit 623, please? Offer States Exhibit 623 into evidence. Uh, Mr. President, it's a public record. Your Honor, do I'm, we need to redact any of this? I, I would think so, Your Honor. This is like a speeding ticket or something. The information that's going to be put up is going to be redacted. It has been redacted. Okay. Not my copy. Yeah, nor on mine. I don't think we should be using this private personal information about anybody talked about in this trial. The hard copy will will be redacted. What's going to be shown has been redacted. I don't know what they're going to show. Oh, oh, can you show us the redacted copy? Because ours is not redacted, nor counsel. We'll break in 15 minutes. We're going to continue to the top of the hour. Thank you, Jim. I'm sorry. We're, no, we're not. I said we're going to break in 15 minutes at the top of the hour. Oh. You may stretch your legs if you like, Senators, but we're going till the top of the hour. If I may, I'm going to move on and we'll come back to this exhibit. Okay, we'll come back to that exhibit. Continue. During the spring and summer of 2018, were there some things that were happening within the office concerning Laura Olson um, that you were having to deal with? Yes. Specifically, um, were there problems with morale? Yes. In which areas of the office were you having difficulty? Travel aides, security detail, Mr. Matier. How about the scheduler? Uh, to the witness, can you repeat that? We couldn't hear you clearly. The travel aides, the security detail, and Mr. Matier was my answer, Your Honor. 
Let's talk about the, uh, the travel detail. What kind of problems were you having to deal with? The travel detail was calling about the hours they were working, the places they were being required to go, and uh, they were concerned about the general's behavior. Okay. How about the bag man? What is a bag man? Uh, it's a travel aid, and the travel aid is the employee at the office of the attorney general that's generally assigned to the attorney general does things like make sure they're on time, has their speeches, make sure this, you get to the venue on time, keeps time, sort of time management, holds on to those, so it's, it's a close aid, were there personal prob aid. Were there problems with the bag man as well? Yes. What kind of problems? Complaining about the hours worked, the hours that worked that weren't state business, expressing those concerns to me because I approve their leave or require them to take particular kinds of leave for non-state business events. What kind of complaints were coming about the hours? Uh, too long hours, no vacation, odd hours. Okay. Were there complaints about security concerns? Your Honor, I'm sorry to interrupt. We're talking about 2018. We are. Some complaints in the office from 2018 that have nothing to do with the, any of the articles of impeachment, I would object to be irrelevant. Overruled. Complaints concerning security. What were the worries? Similar concerns. Which were what? Hours worked, non-state business. Uh, disorganization and changes to the schedule. Issues concerning not state business, what kind of things? I mean, I think the affair was one of the concerns that was not state business. Um, so were some of the different switches in the schedule between campaign events and state business. Who is J.B. Skies? He was General Paxson's travel aide at that time. And for the court reporter, it's S-K-E-E-S. -E -E is that correct? That's correct. All right. And um, what kind of problems did you have with him, if any? I personally didn't have problems with J.B. J.B. quit unexpectedly and refused to tell me or Mr. Mateer, why? You ever had that happen before? I have not. Okay. Were there um, issues um, with the Attorney General's wife that you were having to deal with as well? Some point in time, Mrs. Paxson was calling the office, asking about the schedule or asking where he was, and the staff was uncomfortable sometimes answering those questions and they were complaining about that. Why would they be uncomfortable? Objection, speculation. Sustained. Do you know what caused them to be uncomfortable? Only what I was told. And what was your understanding? This question is, is gonna be relating hearsay, which you just set it up as hearsay, so I object hearsay. Sustained. With a problem like that, uh, uh, with the problems that you were having concerning morale, wh what did you do? Twenty eighteen. Yes. Well, I talked to Mr. Matier. He and I talked about it. I also had a conversation with General Paxton directly by myself about it. Okay. Let's stop and talk about that. Do you recall when that was? I cannot be precise, no. Do you recall what time of year it was? It would have been the summer of 2018. All right. Where did you have that conversation? In my office. Okay. And what did you talk about? Objection to the extent she's going to relate what she said, that would be hearsay. She's here for cross-examination. Sustained. 
What was the topic of conversation? Objection asked and answered. She already told us what the topic was. Overruled. What was the topic? The topic was the ethical implications of a secret affair. Were you able to relay your concerns? Yes. Did he confirm that he, in fact, was having an extramarital affair? Yes. And did he tell you that that was with Laura Olson? No. Not at that time? No. All right. What was his attitude when you told him that things were not good within the office because of that? He was contrite, and he listened to what I had to say very carefully. Did you get the feeling that he thought it was none of your business? Maybe. Um, but we had a good conversation, okay. a productive conversation. Were you able to help him understand why it was affecting the, the life of the office itself? I tried to do that. How did you do that? We, we talked about what had happened to previous public officials that I had counseled in similar situations. We talked about previous public officials and what happened to them in similar situations. We talked about um, the risk involved and in secrets of this magnitude that began to bleed over into the work of the Office of the Attorney General. What kind of risks are there? I mean, there's ethical risks, there's political risks, there's uh, legal risks. What kind of legal? These things can open one up to bribery, mis misuse of office, uh, misuse of state time, um, things like that. How did he receive that information? Well. Okay. Did you make a request of him to tell his wife, Angela? I did. How did that conversation end? Contemplatively, and, he, he, and then he left my office. Were voices ever raised during this conversation? Not in this conversation, no. All right. Based on what you know of him and your experience working with him, how does Attorney General Paxton react to confrontation? He's generally very patient and he listens well, and he takes in information. So I would say he reacts well to confrontation. Let's come forward to October of 2018. Was there an occasion that you went to the campaign headquarters? I did. Right. Um, I think that was actually September of 2018. Okay. And who was, who was present at that time? Jordan Berry, Jeff Mateer, Brantley Starr, Ben Williams, Mark Rylander, I think, perhaps, myself. And I'm not sure I could be leaving someone out, but that's the ones that stand out. Okay. And what was the occasion? We were invited to meet with uh, General Paxton and Senator Paxton to talk about this matter. This matter being what? The, the affair. Okay. Would it be fair to say that General Paxton confessed the affair to all of you? I think that'd be a fair characterization. Okay. Um, did he apologize to all of you as a group? He did. Okay. Describe that experience very briefly, if you would, please. It's an uncomfortable experience. It's an experience I had not had before in my life. Um, Somber, okay. be a word I'd use. 
How did General Paxton's wife take it? How was she responding? She was sad and embarrassed, I believe. That was my impression. Was she crying? She was. Right? When you saw that, what did you do? <clears throat> my heart broke for her. And what did you do? After the meeting had concluded, I think I hugged her and I think I told her that I was um, sorry this had happened to her. Okay. What happened after that? We broke up and went home, okay. went back to work. In September 2018, after that meeting, did you believe that Laura Olson was out of his life for good? Again, at that point, I didn't know her name, but I thought that this type of behavior was out of his life for good, yes.